And uh, similarly with the windows. Maybe this is fully rotting away. You can see it under that sill up there. Well, I just looked through this video again and it's a little <laughs> a minor error. Um, I've used the term Plenty Therm 100 Plus <laughs> in a little bit. Uh, it should be Plenty Therm Total Plus. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> in an earlier video, I talked about replacing the roof line, which was in a pretty desperate state. Anyway, today it's about replacing my windows, which are in <laughs> an equally desperate state. Um, I'm going to look at the crib here, so if I uh, keep looking down, that's, <laughs> I'm just checking to see I'm, I haven't missed anything off. Uh, and if you get lost or, or bored halfway through, then uh, I'll put a printed version on the end of this video so you can just read it at your leisure or not, as the case may be. Um, there were 10 windows to replace, so it obviously wasn't going to be a cheap job. And uh, knowing absolutely nothing about double glazing and, and given the, the somewhat dodgy reputation it's got, I, uh, I thought, well, I, I need to educate myself a little bit about this before I uh, make any rash decisions. So the first thing I needed to know was what all these uh, terms meant. All these things, which can be very confusing. Uh, so this is just a little list of them. The U value or mu value, uh, which they talk about. This is a, a measure of how well a material or a structure, such as a window, allows heat to pass through it. The lower the value, the better it is for windows because you don't want heat to pass through them very quickly. The next thing that comes up is this thing called solar heat gain. The sun radiates both heat and light energy. And when the heat radiation, ignoring the light radiation, but when the heat radiation passes through a window, it heats up the room, but the wavelength of the heat radiation changes. And this change in the wavelength makes it more difficult for the heat to pass back out through the window. Right. In colder climates, or in north-facing rooms, obviously this is a big advantage because it reduces the heating costs. But in hotter climates, or conservatories, or rooms with sort of huge picture windows, it can cause overheating, and you get increased air conditioning costs if you've got such a thing on your house. Next comes emissivity. And this is a measure of how quickly a material gives off heat. And this comes into what they call low E glass. The E stands for emissivity. So this is low emissivity glass. And this glass has a very thin transparent coating of metal on one of the surfaces to reduce the emissivity, in other words, to reduce the rate at which heat will pass through it.
and then along comes low iron glass. Standard glass has a high iron content, which gives it a green tint. Low iron glass, it's a silica glass and it has a very low iron content and it doesn't have this green tint, it is in fact remarkably clear. This is a sandwich of the uh, three types of glass. The one at the top is standard glass which contains a lot of iron and has that very noticeable green tinge and we were looking at it on the edge here so we're looking through quite a lot of glass. The one in the middle is low iron glass, a silica glass which has less iron in and you can see it's almost completely transparent. And the one at the bottom is Planitherm 100 Plus which is St Gobain's low E glass and it has a coating on one of the surfaces a sort of transparent metal coating which cuts down its emissivity in other words prevents heat or cut, reduces the rate at which heat passes through it and if I tilt it you can see there's a slight blue tinge on one surface which is probably caused by the the, um, the metal. So I'll cover half the lens with standard glass. See what you see. See what difference it makes, if any. This is the low iron glass, a very clear glass. See any difference there? And this is the Planitherm 100 plus low E glass. Make of it what you will. Toughened glass, well, that's self explanatory. Uh, this glass has been heated to a very high temperature, about 650 Celsius, and, it, and it's cooled quickly, which gives it uh, strength. It's sort of five times more resistant to uh, heat and shock than standard glass. And it has a little kite mark in the corner. If that kite mark isn't there, then it's not toughened glass. Toughened glass has this etching on it. If the uh, etching isn't there, then it's not toughened glass. And there are regulations about where you have to have toughened glass. And this next photograph uh, illustrates that quite well. And this little painting shows you where you need toughened glass, these blue areas here. I think it's self-explanatory. We're uh, getting to the end of this. Next comes spacers. And these are the things which separate the two panes of glass. They sort of run around the edge. Of the uh, of the window, and the other obvious things, the gap. <laughs> and this is the space between the uh, the two sheets of glass that make up the double glazing unit. If you sell your house, you have to, you're going to have to get one of these. This is a an energy efficiency rating 
how efficient your house is at conserving energy. And of course it includes all sorts of things there. Cavity wall insulation and insulation in the roof uh, and so on. And one of the things will be how good your windows are. So you'll also need one of these. <laughs> your window energy rating. As I'm replacing my windows, I want the best I can get. So I'm looking for A or A+. Plus. That's what I'm aiming for. The choice of uh, frame was UPVC or, or hardwood. There's no point putting wood back on. That was just me. <laughs> Every three or four years I have to paint the bloomin' things. Um, the problem with hardwood is it's very, very expensive. So UPVC was the choice. The problem with UPVC is uh, there are lots of different sections that make up uh, window frames. And some of them are decidedly flimsy. And, uh, with sort of weak fittings that uh, offering poor security. I mean, recommended brands, I mean, in no particular order, these are uh, include uh, Rehau, Commoling, Baker, Dyson Yink, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of that, uh, Profile 22, uh, Spectus. Linus, there are others, but they're the ones I've come across. And uh, make sure that the installer tells you which manufacturer they, they use and, and, and show you an example. I mean, if it feels nice and rigid with a bit of weight, then it's, uh, it's probably okay. But uh, best to use the internet to find out what uh, other people think of your choice. I mean, how many chambers it's got in the uh, section um, will obviously uh, influence the thermal efficiency of the window. I mean, it's a big difference in price, but there's no point fitting expensive glass in uh, frames that you know that don't come up to scratch, especially if they don't meet the A or A star windows energy rating. And secondly, comes the choice of glass. <laughs> now this is where it became really confusing. I mean, there are lots of different glass manufacturers, but I, I only considered two of them. One of them is Saint Gobain, which is a French company based in Doncaster. And the other one is Pilkington's, which used to be British, but is now owned by a Japanese company, and they're based in St Helens. So they were the only two glass companies I looked at. Let's just simplify matters. The two types of glass which were most frequently mentioned were St Gobain's Planitherm and Pilkington's K-Glass. But that's just to start, because they aren't a single glass. Each of those is a sort of family of glasses. And the, uh, the St. Gobain Planitherm family <laughs> includes Planitherm Total Plus. This has a soft, low E coating on one surface for reducing heat loss and it's their highest rated glass for thermal insulation and passive solar gain. In other words, it allows heat to pass in from the sun, warm your room up.
then there was Planitherm 1, which is for minimum heat loss, and it's especially for large picture windows in the wintertime, followed by Planitherm 4S, where where excess heat gain is a problem, such as you get in conservatories, especially in the summertime. Next came Plenty Clear, which is a sort of mid iron glass. It's not standard glass and it's not low iron glass, it's sort of mid iron glass. Then Diamond, which is the clearest low iron glass made by St. Cobain. And lastly, although there are others, <laughs> Kool Aid. And this is a, a, a sort of surface put on the glass, again, where excess heat is a problem. So, there were the St. Cobain. Plenty therm glasses. Perkins just to say he does a list of glasses as long as your arm. But it includes probably the most common glass used in uh, double glazing, which is Pilkin and K glass. And it has a, uh, a hard low E coating for reducing heat loss. Then there's K-glass A, which is a sort of uprated version of K-glass, and it gives you a, a better Windows energy rating than WER. And then K-glass S, it has a soft E coating, and it's there highest rated uh, glass for thermal insulation and passive solar gain. In other words, Pilkington K Glass S is their equivalent of St. Gobain's Planitherm Total Plus, which becomes relevant later. Pilkington also have OptiWhite, which is their Clear a slow iron glass uh, and sun cool, which again is a, a sort of coating put on the glass uh, where excess heat is a, is a problem. So it, that was all terribly confusing. So, what glass you choose depends on where you live and the aspect of your house, whether it's north facing or south facing or whatever. Now it's north facing windows, they benefit from this passive solar gain. Um, sort of free energy from the sun. <laughs> Whereas if you've got large south facing windows, uh, you might need to reduce this uh, free energy from the sun in the summertime, particularly when the rooms become unbearably hot. But I mean, send that. <laughs> you might benefit it from benefit from it in the in the winter time. So you can see just how confusing this whole picture is. And other things you might like to consider are self-cleaning glass. If you don't like <laughs> you don't like washing your windows, or you've got a window which is almost inaccessible, uh, there are self-cleaning surfaces applied to glass. Um, Pilkins have what they call their active range, where Saint Gobain have what they call their bio-clean range. If you live on a noisy road or a noisy neighbourhood, then noise reduction might become something you want to look at. 
and say it could be in have what is called study for silence where it's plug it and this is called optifon and if you want enhanced security then laminated glass that's two sheets of glass with a, some sort of plastic in between then you get on car windscreens you might want to consider that and again St. Gobain Stadip is their standard glass for that and uh, Pilkington have Optilam Lam obviously standing for laminated the ultraviolet light you get from the sunshine also causes furniture and paintings to fade so you, you might want to consider increased uh, protection against ultraviolet light and lastly fire resistance well, that doesn't only apply to windows that normally applies to uh, glazed doors so they are the, uh, the Pilkington and St Gobain family of glasses so having decided on the glass which you're going to have there are three other things which are also important the first is how big a gap you're going to have between the panes of glass the second is what kind of gas you're going to have in between the panes of glass and thirdly what kind of spaces you're going to have around the outside that, that keeps the, the glass separated the bigger the gap between the panes of glass the better the insulation um, water frames usually have a, a gap of about six millimeters whereas today which is what 2018 then uh, a minimum gap of 16 millimeters is recommended but 20 millimeters is even better in all the double glazing systems uh, between the panes of glass was simply dry air um, when the system broke down and water got in you, you got misting up of the panes of glass which was uh, one of the reasons why I'm going to have to, have to change mine um, but today uh, it's better to have argon gas in between the uh, panes of glass it's about 25% more efficient in uh, reducing heat loss compared with dry air all the spaces were made of aluminium, mine were aluminium um, and uh, of course it's a metal so it's a good conductor of heat so there was a heat bridge between the inner pane and the outer pane which allowed heat to pass through quite quickly whereas today they're made from a plastic material which is a, a poor conductor of heat so that cuts down the uh, the rate at which heat passes across the spacer and they're known as warm edge spacers or super spacers and uh, this little bit of video illustrates them both and the uh old windows you can see these are aluminium and metal so they do in fact conduct heat from inside to outside like a heat bridge and uh, they're only six millimeters wide so a new window you can see this is a sort of dark brown almost black plastic these are warm edge spaces uh, made of a composite plastic material so they, they don't conduct a heat anywhere near as much as metal they're, they're a sort of insulator really so this is the the old and the new so there you've got two panes of four millimeter glass and in between is this gap which when you measure it's about seven and a half millimeters whereas this you've got two 
panes of 4mm glass and it's, the gap is 20mm across. It's all a compromise at the end of the day. A good installer, you know, should know all the answers um, and talk you through all the options. You need to discuss the options with them and, and, and not be pushed into making a, a hasty decision you, you might come to regret. When you visit the premises and uh, if possible discuss the options with, uh, with three companies don't just pick one company and go with them and make sure that they, they write all the details down and go home and check it all. Things like quality and price, guarantee, customer reviews, fencer membership, how long it's going to take them, you know and so on. And compare the quotes from each company, make sure you're comparing like with like I mean, some might sound cheap, but when you come to look into it, you know, probably using cheap materials. Don't sign anything until you've done that. You know, once you sign up, you're committed. Salesmen work on commission, you know, and make all kinds of promises. Um, but uh, just take your time, there's no rush despite what they might tell you. I mean, you might find they come back with a better offer. I mean, irrespective of the windows you've chosen, most websites emphasise the importance of good installation. There's no point having chosen pucker frames and pucker glass and then find out that they've been installed poorly. And today the internet makes choosing a good installer much easier. I mean, personal recommendations are certainly a good start. You know, if possible, you know, visit uh, a property where the installer has done work and, and, and you know, talk to the owner about it. And, uh, be wary of uh, website reviews. <laughs> Not a lot of them are genuine. Uh, might have been done by a, a friend of the installer or, or even the installer themselves. The best thing is to go for a company which uh, has been thoroughly vetted by a, a reputable organisation. Um, you know, for example, which magazine is trusted traders. Uh, be aware of uh, trade organisations. I mean, some trade organisations are there to protect their uh, members' interests, which may conflict with your interests in the event of a dispute. When the glazing units arrive, there will be a label on them, which gives details of the type of glass, whether it's toughened or laminated, or low E, or low iron, uh, what gas there is in the space and what kind of spaces are fitted to the glazing unit. That should all be on the label. It's also important that when they arrive, if they aren't already in the window, in the window frame, uh, that they're fitted the right way around so that they the low iron glass is on the outside and the low E glass is on the inside so that the, uh, the soft transparent metal coating is facing the gap on the inner surface of the inner pane of glass if you, if you can understand that. If the label has been removed or there's no label on the glass uh, and there's any doubt about whether one of these panes is low E glass, which is not unknown, unfortunately, then uh, 
your installer should have a low E glass detector. Um, there's a test you can see on the internet which is flame test. It's an absolute con. Uh, you need a low E glass detector. And as I say, your installer should have one of these. So, living in the cold northeast of England, where thermal insulation and passive solar gain are very important. So the final choice is uh, is what it says on this label. And uh, having had it fitted, there's a. Uh, a noticeable difference in the uh, heat retention in the rooms which hopefully will lead to lower heating costs and a very pleasing increase in the uh, clarity of the view although maybe that's just my imagination replacing the double glazing is not an expensive business um, and before you even consider it you should uh, bring the insulation of your walls and uh, roof space up to modern standards. I mean these are relatively cheap to install and do make a big big difference. But uh, if like me you've let your windows go to rock and ruin then and some units are sort of permanently misted up then uh, you just have to bite the bullet and replace them. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll video these sheets and put them, put them on after this. And hopefully, if you're thinking of replacing your double glazing units, uh, I hope this little video will have been of some benefit. Um, it would have been very useful to me before I uh, embarked on this. Anyway, we'll see you again. <laughs> Take care. Cheerio. Oh, what a difference. Yes, an excellent job.